What is going on guys? This is your boy Detroit coming back to you guys with another video. I hope all you guys are staying safe out there. I feel like OBS is constantly always updating their settings or changing something. So I wanted to provide an updated tutorial for the best low end stream settings for your guys' PC. Now, if you guys are wondering if you're in the right place, I currently have the number one ranked best tutorial for the best low end settings for your PC. I also have a couple of other highly ranked videos, one being the best high end stream settings, the other one being the best high end recording settings for those of you guys that do have beefier PCs, which I will leave those linked down below in the description for you guys. Now, if you guys are new to content creating, if you guys are new to Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, whatever it is, I've now also created kits for you guys based on your current budget. So if you guys are just starting out, you guys don't have that much money. I have the best streamer kit linked down below in the description. I also have them ranked all the way up to the best, most advanced streaming gear you guys can possibly buy. So make sure you guys check those out as soon as the tutorial is over. I did all of the work for you guys. I spent all the money, all the time, all the energy testing out all this equipment for you guys so you don't have to. Before we get started, if you guys are new to the channel, please make sure you guys subscribe. And only if you guys end up liking this video, please make sure you guys destroy that like button for me. So yeah, let's get into the best stream settings for your low-end PC. All right, guys, so obviously the first thing you're gonna do is you guys are gonna open up OBS Studio, and now we're gonna get right into the settings. First thing you guys are gonna see is the General tab, which not much is going on in here unless you wanna change this over to the dark theme, which I absolutely love, much better on your eyes, especially when you guys are streaming and recording at nighttime. So we're gonna skip over the General tab, and we're gonna go straight into the Streaming tab. First thing you guys are gonna do is make sure you guys select what platform you guys are trying to stream on. For the sake of this video, we're gonna use Twitch. For the server, I always recommend using auto recommended picks the best server for you. Here's your stream key that you guys are going to input from Twitch. Obviously, don't show that to anybody. Make sure you guys hit apply. And the next up, we're going to go into the output tab. Now, the first thing you guys are going to do is select advanced for the output mode. Next up, we're going to get into the good stuff. Below that, choose the streaming tab so we can get into the stream settings. For the audio track, you guys are going to select one. Next, we're going to get into the encoder. Now, for the encoder, if you guys have an NVIDIA graphics card, make sure you guys select NVENC new. NVIDIA partnered up with OBS a while back when I made the first tutorials and it's been amazing ever since. To not confuse you guys too much and keep this short and sweet, if you use the NVENC new encoder it's much less taxing on your PC and makes everything run a lot smoother and better while using way less power from your GPU. For the enforced streaming service encoder, make sure you guys have that checked. Only have that unchecked if you have a decent PC and plan on using a bitrate higher than 6000. Next up, we'll get into your bitrate settings. For rate control, select CBR, which stands for constant bitrate. Now in the bitrate section, if you are a non-affiliate on Twitch, I recommend you guys leave your bitrate at around 2000. For affiliates with low-end PCs, I do not recommend going over 3500 for your bitrate. So 2000 for a non-affiliate and 3500 for an affiliate. If you guys don't know what an affiliate is, it is the next step up on Twitch before partner, where you guys have streamed for a minimum of a certain amount of hours. You guys averaged more than three viewers per each stream for that month and you guys have over 50 followers on twitch for the keyframe leave it at zero for the profile preset choose either performance or max performance make sure you guys stay away from max quality and quality so for the sake of this video we'll use max performance for your profile make sure you guys select high make sure you guys have both look ahead and cycle visual tuning checked gpu leave that at zero and max v frames leave that at two make sure you guys hit apply before we go into the next tab which is going to be recording all right, guys, so the next thing we're going to do is the recording settings. First thing you're going to do is go up to the output mode and you're going to select advanced. Next, for the type, you're going to select standard. For your recording path, that's where your videos will be saved. Personally, I create a file on my desktop called OBS Recordings and I just save them all there for easy access. For the recording format, make sure you guys select MP4 and for the audio track, just make sure the first one is checked. For the encoder, make sure you guys select the NVENC new encoder again. By the way, guys, if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, you guys should have either an X264 in here or an AMD in your encoder selection. Select AMD if you guys are using an AMD graphics card. If not, worst case scenario, you guys can select X264 and use your CPU to record and stream until you guys have enough money to be able to pick up an NVIDIA GPU. For the rate control, use VBR since VBR is much better for recording. Always remember CBR is the best for streaming and VBR is the best for recording, especially if you guys will be exporting your videos into Premiere Pro after. I export all of my videos using VBR when I export them in 4K. For your recording bitrate, start at 30,000 and for your max bitrate, do not go above 45,000. If you guys are still experiencing lag, start at a lower bitrate. You guys can start at like 15 or 20,000 and then start working your way up to 30,000. That's only if you guys are experiencing frame loss and lag. So make sure you guys start with 30,000 first and 45,000 for your max bitrate. 
Now I just want to throw something out in case you guys are wondering. You guys can use lossless for your bitrate, which is probably the best. However, I don't recommend it because a 20 minute video will end up taking up to 200 gigabytes of storage on your PC. So that's why not too many people use lossless unless they have multiple terabytes available to record their footage. For your keyframe interval, leave that at zero. Preset, select performance. Profile, leave that at high. Make sure you guys also have these checked again, both look ahead and cycle visual tuning. GPU, leave that at zero again, and max B frames, leave that at two. Then hit apply, and we'll go to the next step. Next up, we'll head over into the audio tab. Now, once you guys get in here, the first thing you guys wanna make sure you guys check is the sample rate. If it's at 44 kilohertz, make sure you guys bump that up to 48 kilohertz. For the desktop audio, leave that at default or whatever you guys plan on outputting your audio to. For your mic or auxiliary audio, make sure to select your input microphone you guys will be talking through. For me, it's my Scarlett Solo that's powering my Rode NT1 microphone. So once you guys are done in here, make sure you guys hit apply, and then we're gonna hop over to the video tab. Now once you guys are in the video tab, for your base resolution, I recommend you guys stream in 720p. So set both the base and the output canvas resolution to 1280 by 720. Now, you guys, if you're affiliates or non-affiliates, you won't have to worry about transcoding because you guys won't be streaming in 1080p, so that's a plus. And nine times out of 10, a lot of your viewers can't really watch in 1080p because they'll start buffering. Uh, that's why those partners get those uh, transcoding settings to where it could transcode from 360p all the way up to 1080p based on that person's internet. So I don't want you guys streaming in 1080p right now. There'll be a time where you guys will get there, don't worry. But for now, I feel like 720p is the best for you guys and the best for your PC. For your downscale filter, make sure you guys select bilinear. I feel like the other settings are for higher end PCs. Now this is important guys, so pay attention. For your FPS, if you guys are not an affiliate on Twitch, I want you guys to stick to 30 FPS. If you guys are an affiliate on Twitch, you guys can go ahead and try and see if the 59.94 FPS works for you guys. If you guys experience any throttling or any lag, you guys can always just drop back down to the 30 FPS, but it'll be okay for you guys to go ahead and try that to see if it works. So once you guys are done here, make sure you guys hit apply and then we'll go over into the hotkeys. Now for the hotkeys, they're pretty self-explanatory. Whatever keys you guys plan on binding on your keyboard to use with OBS, you guys can set those here. Make sure you guys hit apply and then we'll go over to the advanced settings. Now for the process priority, make sure you guys select above normal. Next up for the video section, you guys can leave it as it is, uh, NV12, 709, and fill the color range with full. I feel like I've played with these settings multiple times over the years and it really don't make a difference for me personally. Once you guys are done here in the video section and in the general section for the process priority, make sure you guys hit apply. Now when you guys are playing games like Call of Duty Warzone or Apex, sometimes when you're in OBS, you might notice that the color settings do not look right on your stream or on your recording. So I'm gonna show you guys really quick how to fix that. It's super simple if you guys are using your Elgato, I'm using my Elgato 4K here. Some of you guys may be using an Elgato HD60, whatever it is. Right click on the settings here and head over to filters. Once you guys get into the filters here on the bottom side, I want you to hit the plus button and I want you to select color correction and the Luma key. I want you to add both of those in here as if you guys were adding a scene. And in color correction here, you're gonna play around with the settings until you feel like they look the best for your current setup. So color correction and Luma key, those are the two most important settings to play with. But like I said, if you guys, if your stream looks cloudy, if your recording doesn't look right with the color settings, this is how you guys can go ahead and fix that. Other than that, guys, I don't feel like too much has changed with the updated low end OBS streaming and recording settings. I did want to give you guys an updated 2020 tutorial because you guys absolutely loved all of my other tutorials. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a refresh. And there's a couple of things that I included in this tutorial that I didn't include in those at that time. If you guys did end up liking this video, please make sure you guys smash that like button for me. Make sure you guys subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, yeah, YouTube, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Ha <laughs> ha